Isabella Kung is a picture book author and illustrator who uses watercolor, ink, and digital to bring her art and stories to life. I was curious to know why creating for kids inspired her so much and the story behind her choice of art mediums. I'll let you be the judge of the outcome, and you can find more at Isabella's work at isabellacung.com. But for now, please join us as we talk about the key to keeping your art spontaneous, how art and stories impact children and their development, Isabella's picture book process, and the definition of the watercolor ugly face and how to overcome it. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest, Isabella. Hi. <laughs> Please, can you quickly tell us who you are and what is it that you do? Okay. Um, I My name is Isabella Kong and I am a children's book author, illustrator. Actually, I like to say illustrator author because I, def- I come from an illustration background. I went to uh, art school, Academy of Art was where I graduated uh, in illustration. And I already immediately went into the children's book uh, industry, but I've done freelance here and there. And uh, my main medium is till this day, my favorite medium is still watching watercolor and my recently I have a debut book picture book come out no fuzzball by scholastic and it mm-hmm. came out August for congratulations 2020. Yes. and it looks amazing I'm definitely yeah. getting it I'm like I'm getting big lover. <laughs> I have a big collection of children's books and uh now that I have a kid it's growing even more mostly in English <laughs> but I'm like the kid needs to learn two languages so he'll oh that's he'll... awesome I But that is, till this day, the most books I buy is picture books, and I can justify it as research. (laughs) That's what I do, but now I have a second excuse. Also plush dolls. I have a better excuse to buy all the plushies. Very cute. I never needed an excuse. I never, like, I had no shame. No shame on you. Yeah, whatever brings us joy right now. (laughs) Right? Um, Okay, so... I have a very special question that I prepared for you. Uh, It's like open to debate. I'm not expecting a super direct answer, but it's more of a conversation theme. So I, let's start with the beginning. Why did you, why did you choose children's book illustration? Why is that, why is that special to you? Um, Okay. So well, hindsight is 2020, right? But at least I'll, I'll, I'll start with saying, um, I already knew I wanted to go into illustration um, because I was not interested in doing fine art, but I really love using traditional mediums. I like, no, I love problem solving. So picking that major was not a problem. But I, of course, didn't really have a clear idea what I wanted to do. Like, the, everything seems endless possibilities, but I didn't land, I think I landed on children's book maybe halfway through my second year. Uh, I was starting to really think about portfolio at that time, and I was also falling in love with watercolor. So I combined all my interests. What is an industry that still really embraces traditional mediums, Mm -hmm. um, loves narrative uh, storytelling? Like, I know, like, advertisement and editorial is also telling a story, but I I like um, a a children's, I mean, I like a full-on fictional story i mean non-fiction too but but that is one of the uh, big points and um and i and i realize i'm pretty decent at drawing children and animals so I'm like this is this seems like the perfect path for me and then over time as i got into of course i've illustrated for a long time and then i taught for a while and when i started becoming interesting in writing too and really exploring my own childhood i realized i've always loved children's book I always love stories I my grandmother read me stories growing up as a kid and I love listening to that um my mother you know carried on um and yeah and I still remember some of my very old um picture books that had brought me to tears so now it all made sense it was uh it was definitely destined to be from the beginning (laughs) 
Oh, that's beautiful. That's what I was uh, trying to get at. I mean, just a little bit of uh, feedback here, not, not feedback, a little bit of context on why I picked this theme. So I also love children's book illustration. Mm -hmm. I'm also making my own books. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when I started with art, I thought children's book was the only one thing I would not ever, ever do. Mm -hmm. And then it's the one thing I love the most doing, which is hilarious how things sometimes kind of, you know, uh, change <laughs> yeah. and shape us. It's not all your choice. Some things speak to you louder than others and you end up, you know, following your path. And what you said really speaks to me, which is when you were a kid, you still have like old children's books that brought you to tears and moved you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the power of art right and I'm, I don't mean art in just a visual sense because art is so broad and you have musicians and that's mm -hmm. an art and you have dancers and that's another form of art and you like f for me up to a certain extent cooking can be also a form of art oh yeah uh, so great. art is just so broad you mm -hmm. know, and uh, Etcher is all about facilitating art making in terms of visual art so we're more specific on in that field and mm -hmm. what you're telling me, it feels to me that you're saying that the combination of art and storytelling is mm -hmm. what made it so special for you. Mm -hmm. So storytelling is also an art, you know, passing down stories since ancient times, you know, stories have preserved and kept our culture alive and information and science and all of that. So what is it, what is it about art and storytelling together that seems so powerful in your opinion uh, i think just as any reader would say um, stories are are a way to travel and explore the world that we would uh, otherwise not experience it's oh. and sometimes even go beyond our reality to something more than um or a different alternative universe or, or a, a ch uh, even an animal's universe um so it's a great escape and it's also some way we can really relate to each other because the core uh, emotional connection, um, no matter what universe or what character, it always goes back to that. And, um, and I, and I love, um, being in that world and also being in that child world, uh, our childhood world too, like connecting with kids and connecting to our inner child. So all of that combined, you know, is, mm -hmm makes it all so much fun and what do, what is it i think i touched the subject a bit when i interviewed um mark brewer in the past what is it about children and wanting to create art and stories for children that is so fulfilling and how is it different from creating the same thing for adults oh well c children there's there's a matter of fact that about children that they just accept anything you tell them as fact. Like, so you can really go out outrageous out there with stories. And as adults, I think even for me too, like there's a, like, even like when picking, let's say a new TV show, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have all these things like, Oh, I, I'm not into this right now, or I can't take another serious show right now. Like I'm not giving these shows the chance to even, um, connect with me and for me to fall in love with those characters. Like I, I like, but as children, you have a completely open mind to everything and they just accept everything and absorb everything and give those characters and stories a chance. And also it's fun. Like, I can make a whole entire story about a black cat and kids love it and make them laugh and it's hilarious. But, you know, adults, um, I mean, a lot of adults li liked it too. Thank goodness. I was very mm -hmm. uh, happy about that. But, you know, it's it's not targeted marketing at adults either. And I think that's another thing as an illustrator too, a picture book is a format that you can really fully stretch your, um, stretch your mark. Like you, the 50% or, of the story is told for the illustration. So you get to really play in that 32 page or 40 page range and um, yeah, really have some fun with it. Yeah, just a little context for our readers who are not super into the children's book world. You usually have two formats of children's books. When we're talking about, it's, it's grade school, right? Uh, my book is a picture book, so uh, a little bit about around 
the the age estimate is four to eight, but、yeah. um, I have seen a lot of different kids, all different ages, reading、exactly. it. So that's really fun. Yeah. So usually it's、um, the the amount of spreads in a picture book. It's either a, a or B. Usually that's why you were saying thirty something to forty something、uh, pages.、Mm-hmm. So just for, just for context. So、mm-hmm. how can art and stories make this world better for children specifically, in your opinion? Oh, oh well, this world is a very complicated place, and of course, as a kid, you have to, you have to learn the world around you in small amounts at a time, or not.、Mm-hmm. It will be way too overwhelming. I mean, even as adults, I feel overwhelmed by the world and how complicated、oh, so、it is. So、everything、as a kid, at you all the time. oh, I know, and everything has all these unintended consequences. But anyways, but as a kid, like when you're reading a book, you know you're. You're 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 learning new things.、Uh, like whether it's a young kid, you're learn like certain picture books have a lot of rhythm and 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 rep- repetition to it.、Mm-hmm. And like kids, you're learning what expectation is, for example, and the、mm-hmm. repetition of words. And or you,、uh, uh, and with pictures too. Like sometimes kids can be younger than the recommending reading age, or s- starting to learn how to read and write, and they can recognize. Um, images from the illustrations first, and then relate it to the words on the book, and、mm-hmm. that will help them,、um, you know, learn how to read. And、um, and like picture books often, you know, help kids go through real, like not only help them bring a lot of joy and humor, but also helps them like talk about difficult topics, like grieving, for example. There were there's a few books about death that that is very of A great way to start a conversation with kids, and I, I always,、uh, I, I keep referring back to this one、um, scientific study about、um, kids' acti-、uh, brain activity when reading. Well, the study is not really relevant to the question. It was about、uh, a kid's brain activity when、uh, reading from a screen or being read to by ebook versus.、Yeah. Hardcover book, and the brain activity of a child reading a hardcover book with with a parent is the highest because you're、wow. engaged in a lot of conversations.、Um, the kid also having a hardcover copy, you know, they can go at their own pace. They can turn the pages as much as they want. They can go back as much as they want.、Um, versus when they're looking at a screen, you know, they're just getting stimulated like a TV. So less interaction and less brain activity. So I'm going off of a tangent. But overall, please do, like please I do, love it. <laughs> uh, like reading is such an important thing for kids, and learning how to read too. And and once they gain that interest and know that they have the ability to read, then as they keep growing, they can have an entire library, entire world of books for them to explore. So,、um, like, and my parents, you know, they they before they.、Um, You know,、uh, had us. They they didn't had a chance to travel a lot. They learned a lot about the world through reading too. So I've always felt reading is such an important thing for children. And picture books is the first steps to. Oh well, not first step. Board books are. Picture books are the second step to get them there. Beautiful. Yeah, I love it.、Yeah. And you're so right. I mean, if for babies, and I have a five month. He's now five months.、Uh, actually, he will be this Thursday.、Uh, <laughs> mom's being so fussy about dates.、Um, Yeah, he was.、Uh, so, th- thank you. So for a baby, I think it's so important. You know those little books for babies that have those textures and make those sounds as you flip through the quote unquote pages because they're kind of made of cloth and such. Seeing him、mm-hmm. touch those and trying to turn the pages because it's still very very tiny. If that's、mm-hmm. a very educational experience for a kid because all they can like a baby. All he understands is color in 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 texture so far, and just if for one tiny baby being able to turn pages of color and texture is so good for his brain development, what you're saying makes so much sense. I mean, when you flip a page of a picture book, you see how the colors you know swaps from one spread to the other, how the drawings are correlated, because that's the magic of doing good picture book is the whole book is like a symphony. It's not every spread its own thing. That's not. That's usually not the case. Everything、yeah. builds on top of everything to come to an ending, like closure of a great, fantastic piece that works by itself. So it makes a lot of sense that you cannot. 
you just cannot get that experience with screens even you know it, it is possible but not the same way for sure wow there are some that come very well done and come pretty yeah. close but nothing beats a hardcover well and of course i'm a book romantic too i love the smell of books i love yeah. feeling and i think another thing has to be said of a ki- if you give the kid a hardcover book it's theirs mm-hmm. like they, they get to keep it in their room it's not an ipad that needs to be taken away you know mm-hmm. it it's theirs it, yeah. you know I like and, that. and also just to also be the I don't want to be the devil's advocate here but there's also a difference uh, between a book that has been translated to a digital version and mm-hmm. a story that was planned to be digital from the very beginning so I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that a story that is in, in an iPad that was made to be interactive and mm-hmm. played there then it would be harder to translate it to a book and have it be the same quality as a story that was planned as a book. But anyway, that's a whole other rent that is very specific to picture books that we'll just leave for another day. Um, yeah. So what are called, how do you get, Are your are, is your picture book made out of watercolor? How do you go about that process? Uh, definitely majority watercolor um so i i i use digital too but um mostly photoshop but more as a editing tool or and sometimes um i like to you know for efficiency and and saving space too like sometimes i if i have a lot of spot illustrations spot illustrations are tiny illustrations that don't take up the whole page mm-hmm. um uh, on a picture book spread like maybe four or five i might do it all on random areas on a sheet of paper and I have Mm. to um put it into uh I'll scan it in and clean it up and put it into the right position like I don't always paint exactly as the page does and sometimes um on a newer book that hasn't come out yet um I do some collaging uh digital collaging like I'll Mm. paint like a character oh I did it for fuzzball too for the cover like I'll paint the foreground and the character on one sheet of uh, watercolor paper and I'll paint the background on another sheet because cover the art director tends to have to uh, mess with it a lot Uh, they will have to you know fit in the text fit in my name fit in the barcode and all that kind of stuff needs Mm -hmm. flexibility a range of flexibility so they can adjust it so they they do like things in two layers so um, I I definitely I try to adjust to that and help them out there. Um, and digital, I mean, I do digital. Okay, so in order to create the book, uh, I do have a Cintiq, mm. thankfully. Um, I have started transitioning a lot of my sketches, um, especially when I'm doing the storyboard uh, digitally, because I just keep, I'll change and I'll do so many little things. So, and it's easy for me to use digital. Mm-hmm. Uh, it speeds it up a little bit um, instead of traditionally paper, you know, scan and edit that. Um, and then I will digitally do a color study because, as we know, watercolor takes a little bit of pre planning. You kind of <laughs> don't want to just dive into it without any forethought. So, I would do a pretty, a lot of people say my, my color studies are, are, are very close. It, I, it, it, I do figure out all my colors before I go into my paintings. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I, I spend the rest of the time completing that um, in watercolor and then I'll scan it in. And for sometimes I'll even add little touches digitally too. But, um, but that's basically how I do it. Um, and for my new book, um, it's a board book about cats. <laughs> uh, I actually used um, ink. I, 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 I love um, using ink as well as watercolor. They're both water mediums. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one had a lot of uh, ink textures and wet, wet on wet. And I, I spent a lot of time on that. Um, so I paint it all in ink and then I colorize it digitally. Cool. Do you do your, just out of curiosity, are your color studies digital? So you quickly, mm-hmm. okay, so you quickly figure out the color combinations and then that's when you go into watercolor. Okay, mm-hmm. that does make a lot of sense. I, I was specifically very, I was personally very curious about this because I'm still fi- figuring out my own method between digital and traditional watercolors. But uh, I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I find it. I still don't. I mean, there are so many amazing tools out there to paint digitally mm-hmm. uh, in a watercolor look or finish. I, I the mean, same. 
from from Photoshop to Procreate, I actually have a lot of those of Kyle brushes or Max Pack brushes. But I just realized, at least for me personally, I just don't get the same enjoyment from mm-hmm. doing it. And I'm like, if I'm spending the same amount of time creating Might this piece, well do the real thing. I will do something I like, you know. Yeah, more, I, I, like more. I agree 100. percent I agree 100. percent Um, in terms of art making and watercolor. Okay, one, why watercolor? Ooh, why watercolor? Ah, uh, well, the I just love the tech, the range of textures it can create, and I love the luminosity because you know watercolor, most of it is uh, transparent, so when the light hits, it it will bounce all the way to the white layer of the white of the paper before it bounces back to our eye. So it does have that luminous quality that people usually Mm -hmm. describe watercolor paint to have. Uh, And third, there is a level of um, unpredictability with watercolor. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes um, there's a lot of, I feel like as I learn too, like I, I get really, excited just observing how water and paint and paper dry and the different characteristics Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of all of that and studying that and trying to learn how to manipulate it like I don't think um, I'm I will have I don't think in the rest of my life I'll have a hundred percent control of watercolor that is just not the nature of the medium but just learning and gaining the experience enough to manipulate it is quite thrilling I actually think so yeah yeah so that's 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 why watercolor I guess and and I feel like um on with other mediums um like oils I just I never I painted I learned all of them I just never really got into it as much as watercolor mm-hmm we are kindred souls and uh, we're almost uh, wrapping up the interview but do you have any memory of like when you were working with water- watercolor something that was really really hard that you had to overcome and how you like how you did that any st- story that comes to mind <laughs> um nothing is jumping out exact i mean of course when i first started learning watercolor mm-hmm. definitely there were a lot of those hurdles and and very commonly overworking a painting mm-hmm. and like just, adding layers uh, and layers and layers la- and, yeah, and then lifting it, all. it and repainting it and just ruining that spontaneity that sometimes watercolor can have so that i struggle with that a lot at the beginning um a little bit better now but i, I um but I do have the fun fact is I do record a lot of my painting sometimes and do time lapse videos. Mm-hmm. But sometimes after a long time has passed, I will look at a painting, especially the more complex one. I I don't know if other artists think of that, but I'll look at it like I don't know how the hell I did that. <laughs> so it would be real. It was really fun to then look at my own videos of like, oh, OK, that's how I did it. <laughs> um uh, but I, I don't know if that's how answering your question, but that came came to mind. Do you have any tip on how to keep the painting spontaneous and not ruin it? Uh, I guess the willingness to just paint and try and try again. Like if you overpainted it the first time, scrap it, do it all over again. I mean... Just like any, like I think I still occasional, I still struggle sometimes with keeping things simple, mm-hmm. um, and and letting it be. So, I guess the, the simplest answer is just practice. Cool. Yeah. Do it all over again and all over again and all over again. <laughs> I, and all over again. Many... I feel like it's a skill that I will learn till I'm dead. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like mastering something. You'll never, you're, you're never the true master of anything. You will just keep on yeah. improving the skill until the day that you're no longer doing it. Yeah. How do you think picking your colors has anything to do with that? For example, I know that if you use too many colors, then you are pretty much dooming yourself to ruining the whole painting with the abuse of color that you're adding. Uh, yeah, that definitely uh, helps simplify things. And I think like um, uh, giving yourself that limit helps you to find uh, more interesting and creative ways to solve a problem too. So, um, uh, and being spontaneous or, or, or being, 
uh, or not overcomplicating a painting uh, needs you to be focused to. So if you're like, you know, watercolor, like when we're putting down a wet layer, we have a time limit before the layer dries in order to to do all we want to that layer. So if you have too many colors and you're spending all that time mixing uh, or being undecisive, then you're missing an opportunity to to leave interesting watermarks or strokes. Um, so, yeah, I think a limited palette definitely helps. Um, or at least having a strong goal before you even get started. Like, okay, I'll use this range of colors and I want um, a certain spontaneity look to it and definitely find reference. Uh, find a lot of artist reference and have them up while you paint. Um, so you can, uh, and as any, uh, mastering any skills, uh, imitation is the first step, um, to go, you know, mm -hmm. like learning from other master artists, like what they did to, to simplify certain things or make certain strokes to indicate or symbolize something else. Um, yeah, copying that first, don't publish it as yours, but definitely copy it to, pro uh, to practice. And then, yeah. um, and then you, you soon gain that skill. I love how practicing and planning is the key to being spontaneous with the final result. <laughs> right. That is odd. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> but it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, any last words to our listeners before you wrap up the interview? Uh, keep creating. I know it's hard. It's very, very hard, but... Um... But don't give up. And, and look, one thing I used to tell my students about watercolor, too, um, there is always an ugly face in the middle. Mm -hmm. before, because watercolor, we build from light to dark. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a part in the middle when not all the values are filled in. And values are so important in any artwork. Uh, so when the values are messed up, it looks messed up. But that doesn't mean that you have ruined it, that you need to completely scrap it and start mm -hmm. over. You just keep working on it. And sometimes you'll fix it and it will look great at the end. And if it doesn't, you learn a lot through the process. So that is a, an advice that I think most students of watercolor should hear. Love it. And that's it. So what are your thoughts about this episode? Anything in particular that speaks to you? Please let us know in the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etcherlad.com forward slash kung that's e-t-c-h-r-l-a-b dot com forward slash k-u-n-g like the podcast help us support the show by subscribing and giving us a five-star rating and review on apple podcasts at etrelab.com forward slash go forward slash apple see you in the next episode and until then let's make more art my voice is terrible today why do I have to be sick? <laughs>